Hello. How are you? <clears throat> I'm inside today, although it feels like I'm outside. Because I live in the jungle, the beautiful palm desert, so to speak. Uh, my audio equipment, I'll show you. So this is my new camera, I mean, I'm not going to talk about it that much. But I got these lapel mics, and they plug into my bass audio jack. This is called a Zoom H4N Pro. These things are pretty badass. And uh, then these go in the bottom, XLR to here. But for some reason, I can't find the clip and the windscreen that's going to hook on, so... Uh, I'm not gonna shoot upstairs right now because I don't know what the audio is gonna sound like. I'm just gonna try it out in here. I did the camera a little bit yesterday and the audio is, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad as long as there's not a lot of background noise. As soon as there gets to be a lot of background noise and I'll show you what I mean because I got some footage yesterday from the Alchemy Castle. Um, it, it, the audio, if there's background noise, this camera is not equipped to, to handle the audio, but that thing is. You can take those things into crowds and like, so I just, anyway, I just got windscreens in there on the way and they'll be here tomorrow. So I'll be doing more outdoors, uh, outdoorsy events then and, and beyond. And I plan to have some guests on. Uh, I had a great weekend. I spent Friday with friends. My friend's sister's going up to, uh, she's moving up to Alaska for a year. So we all had a going away party for her and that was pretty incredible. And then I slept all day Saturday for the most part and recovered because uh, it was a late night, Friday night. And then yesterday on Sunday, I worked the Alchemy Castle up in the Hollywood Hills for a VidCon after party where we did some, had some incredible fun, danced my ass off, played, uh, well, actually, I didn't play any guitar, although I felt like I did because everyone was playing so hard. And there was a, an oxygen bar. There was VR. And I'll show you some footage right now. Hey, guys. I'm up at the uh, Alchemy Castle in Hollywood Hills where we're about to do a decompression party for VidCon. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna be running the VR. Really nice view. Got a little live music outdoors. It was pretty awesome. I'm watching uh, Sargon of Akkad on Rogan right now, actually, right over here. Excuse the uh, the slightly messy desktop. Oh, there's Amazon. You can see I was purchasing something. Sargon's a Minds user. Very popular on the site, and Rogan just had him on today. So uh, I'd like to have you on my show, Sargon. But uh, you'll probably be out of town by the time I get to you. It's pretty intense. They're talking about gender. And you know, interesting thing about gender, men and women, there's sex and then there's gender. And sex is, do you have a penis or do you have a vagina? Or were you born with a penis or were you born with a vagina? And gender is, do you feel like a man or do you feel like a woman? Or do you feel like something, you know, other than that? But I mean, the argument is, what is that? You know, what's what? And Jordan Peterson is fantastic. I guess you would call him a psychologist. He's a professor at the University of Toronto. And man, if you don't know who Jordan Peterson is, you must educate yourself and watch some Jordan Peterson videos because he is all about, I mean, he's very realistic and very much talks about clean up your life. You clean your house and then you can start to help the outside world. If you're focused on the outside world and 
your house is a mess, you're missing the point. So actually, I, like I said, I hired someone to come in and help me clean my house. <laughs> it's beautiful now. I mean, it's still a little bit messy over there. Got a lot of shit, a lot of stuff to clean up. But it's manageable. I actually walked in here the other night and uh, I keep looking up at, my, at the screen up above. I think I'm gonna move this because I'm tired of, uh, tired of it distracting me. I walked in uh, after the after the show yesterday and or after the party and I just first thing I thought was I love this place or was it after it was a Friday when I got home Saturday morning I walked in and I just thought I love you this whole apartment there's the fresh air and the beautiful sun and everything <sighs> such a change of pace to have a clean apartment I could smell the ocean for the first time and I think it's because the dust was all cleared out my God let's do this every month. Um, so Peterson, Jordan was talking about the difference of gender and how men and women really are different. And like, as much as I want to believe we're the same, you know, which is kind of a silly way to put it. We're not the same. We have a lot of similarities, but we're not the same. I remember this girl in high school, Jamie, used to say, I would say, similar and the same mean the same thing. I just to kind of piss her off. And then she'd be like, no, they don't. I'd be like, yeah, they do. Similar and the same. Utter joke. And when I would say, we're all the same. I mean, there's an essence of that that's true. We are very much the same in some ways, you know, where we're descendants of monkeys. So in that, we're the same, but despite our similarities, we're very different, all of us, and especially men and women. Men and women have very different roles in society, and this is fascinating. I'll, I'll just, I'll tell you what I got from Jordan, hearing Jordan talk about it, and he goes on and on. I mean, this is a big part of his studies, gender studies program. I think he actually does like more like psychology. You know, from what I gather, as a man, it's, it's hard to get into the mind of a woman and really understand that what it's like for a female in society as opposed to what it's like in a man in society. Because I don't, when I walk down the street, there's no, I never think like, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna get attacked by a woman or get raped or get jumped or get, you know, I, I mean, I have a little bit of that, like I guard myself because I don't want to get attacked, of course, by anybody, but women are, are more, I think, in need of protection just because of child, their child rearing capability, ability, and uh, physical stature. Not that all women are smaller than men. You know, there's some women that are bigger than men, but I mean, for the most part, men were, are like bread. We're all born women in the womb. We're all created as women. You know, we're, we're all, and then we, we start to split off very early in our growth uh, and develop a chromosomal shift towards becoming a male, but we all start off as female. And then because of the testosterone and possibly other things too, we start to develop certain traits that differentiate us. And the high levels of testosterone uh, encourage our upper body strength and just give us the ability to build, crush, and kill for the most part, break and, and force. And, and females are more, you know, their bodies are really developed on the inside, uh, you know, the womb and the, and the internal organs for, to, handle the, to, to handle the animal. Um, and so our jobs then become into society as like the protector and the protected, or in some ways, because if a woman's pregnant, she's very vulnerable. And babies particularly are extremely vulnerable. Let me see if I can tilt this. That nah, probably looks good. I mean, human babies are, are wildly vulnerable. More than a lot of other animals, when they come out of the womb, they're like, for whatever reason, I think it's because our heads are so big, our brains are so big that we're forced out of the womb early. This is like what a, a lot of the consensus is. So this incredible species of human, we're, we're shoved out early so that our heads can continue to grow and don't kill the host, the host, like we're some sort of parasite. And then we're, for what, however many, two years or something crazy, we're just useless. I mean, we're three years, four years, five years, good God, what can a five-year-old really do in society? Maybe carry some stuff around, learn how to use a knife, doesn't have much force behind his, his or her arms. Make sure my volume's down here. So this whole like the protect the idea of the protector is is so important in in women, and I guess we both have uh, 
protector-like qualities, whereas the woman really has to protect the baby. For, I mean, in the womb particularly, that's like they are bred to, we are created to protect the baby. This is the female's, one of her primary jobs in the universe is to protect the child. Very interesting, you know, and, and, and Peterson talks a lot about feminism and like the danger of, some of the danger of modern feminism when it's like, you know, equal rights, yes, but like talking about how like we're the same. I don't know, I mean, he's great. You gotta listen to him. So I don't wanna misquote him or anything, but I think that there's, there's maybe a, a common misconception today that that we are like t the same or that we should be like treated the same in, in pretty much all social situations, but we're very different. We're just very, very different. And it's okay to be very different. And attract attraction is okay too. I, I went through a phase where I was very friendly with men and women and then I, I started to feel bad that I was so physically attracted to women. And so I would actively avoid them, when, especially the beautiful one, like if the very beautiful women, if I see them, I, I've got this tendency, I just want to engage. When I meet people, especially beautiful people, I want to engage, I want to see them inside, I want to know everything about them and become more beautiful by being around them and to increase it. And I started to feel very guilty about that because like, I don't want to be some gay sex cult leader. Like I don't want to be some sex cult leader where I'm like, fucking everybody, you know, and, and that can easily happen if you let loose, as you can see with like these crazy cults where like the, the guy is like talks and talks about how good everything is and how connected everything is and how we're all unified and then he just fucks everybody's wives and that's like, well, I've seen that happen enough that I know that that's not my path, so I've chosen more of a technological endeavor at the moment. But man, being a rock star, you kind of got to calm down and people just want to touch your body. And that is a very unique lifestyle. And it's interesting. And drugs help. You know, acid will help you in that situation, not give a shit so much, at least it helps me. Um, that aside, I felt like, you know, my job is to protect women. I, I, and in order to do that, or my job is to protect men and women, and in order to do that, I, I should not engage with them so much because I can do better for society as a, uh, a unified whole. If I'm myself and I take care of myself and my surroundings, I can make it better for everyone else around me. Whereas if I'm engaged in someone and talking to them, it's very dangerous for them because I can take control of their life. And, and I have a tendency to take control of the situation when I'm talking. Uh, I, just, I just am built to do it. I, I see very clearly a path of commun conversation, communication, and I want to explore that. And if someone's there with me, I do that with them and I take them along with me. With the video camera, it's a very safe exercise. When when people are around, like, suck you in, baby. Like, I, I gotta be very, I gotta sort of be careful. But what I'm realizing is, going into Ted thinks I'm like one of those spinner tops watching. That was a funny comment, Ted, you motherfucker. Uh, I realized that, no, no, I think I am supposed to engage with people. You know, I think I went too far in one direction. And now I'm supposed to go back in the other direction. But like, you know, and become more more like interactive with people on a one-on-one -on -one scale. And, and I'll notice, man, I'm like obsessive in public. Like I'm thinking, 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 like witnessing. What did I just say? What just got said? How is everyone's body language changing? People come over and they sit, I'm like chilling on the bed, you know, I'm like chilling on the couch, just like relaxing. And all these people come over and like lay down with me on the bed and then everyone's really cool. And they're all like, you just relaxing? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're all like kind of like snuggling up on me and then as soon someone will bring something up and as soon as I'm like, yeah, that was I did that earlier, it was awesome. Everyone like awkwardly like kind of looks around each other, gets up and walks away. And I'm like, well, if I didn't say anything there, if I just played it cool, they would still be all crawling all over me. And I guess maybe now I'd be the famous guy, but instead I just had this desire to talk. I want to tell you, I want to communicate, I want to, oh yeah, let me relate my past to what you just talked about. And it's like, no man, sometimes people just want to tell you something and, and you have this tendency, you want to, you like, oh yeah, I want to relate to you by talking, but it's like, no, nah, sometimes you just gotta, if, if you really want to be lifted up, you gotta just kind of not say anything. Very strange, very weird, very weird. I don't know if, it, if I don't know if that's like the, uh, a healthy reality, but, it could be, but then at the same time, 
maybe I'm supposed to speak up and they're supposed to leave and in the future we'll come back together and be better friends for it. Whereas if I didn't say anything, it would have been awkward. Maybe they would have been crawling away. It would have felt good in the moment. And I'd be like totally manipulating the situation by not saying anything right now, but I'm going to act like I'm cool and I don't care about anything. I'm just chilling and meditating. I'm like, and you know, sometimes I really am meditating. That's a very attractive quality. Dude, I'm just obsessed with psychology. Obsessed to possibly an unhealthy point. I gotta get, I gotta work through that. I'll work through it. I'm working through it. Dude, fuck it. Fuck it! Fuck it, man. Fuck it. Be yourself. Be yourself. Love them and let them love you. Be yourself. What would you do if they weren't in the room? Act like that when they're in the room. No, that's not the answer. Maybe there's a difference between acting cool and being cool. Maybe. What's the difference between acting and being? Acting takes a little more effort. But if you're a good enough actor, it seems like you're being that way. Like, my natural tendency is anxiety. My natural tendency is to protect myself. And uh, maybe it's because when I was younger, I tried to be, I was really nice to people and they kind of spat on me and somebody would get lost and didn't like me or would push me because it was like, you know, they came from a rough childhood and they got pushed around and they weren't used to being treated well. And so I, all I was was a bundle of love. Like my parents were so nice to me and told me to be kind to everybody. So I, I, and it confused the shit out of me. So I kind of learned to protect myself um, and act and act cool and act cool because my parents weren't cool. I mean, they, they were kind of cool, but they were from a generation where, you know, Nixon was president and Vietnam draft and my dad had to go in the Navy and my mom was like abused by an ex-boyfriend and like just crazy shit. And so they weren't like the deepest, coolest, chillest hippies that like dropped a lot of E when they were young, communicated, just were very comfortable, very wealthy, very happy, very chill. There are people like that that have kids that are like that. And that wasn't mine. I had to learn to become cool. I had to really work at it, and I still do. I have to work out, I have to get the agitation out of my system and eat right, and watch myself on video and see when I'm not being cool, and watch other people that are cool and emulate them. And it has a really positive, healthy impact. It's, I've changed, I've grown a lot into the person I wanna become, which is a very relaxed person in a lot of ways. And still, when I'm in huge parties and all the popular people come up to me and want to talk to me. I, I feel it deep down, this desire to like just lose my shit and start going, ah, blah, 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 blah. like I could feel it. But I have to maintain the chillness if I want to move that relationship forward. And it is the greatest journey of my life in that it is the most effort of anything I've ever endeavored in and the most rewarding thing I've ever endeavored in. I've ever, I've ever done. Ever apostrophe D-O-N-E. Ever done. Ever done. That's what it is, ever done. Oh God, the other night. So Friday night we had this party and it went all night and like the next morning I was up and went out in the sun and I just got all this sun. I'm so happy and I'm still like slightly red. I ate, uh, so if you ever get a sunburn, go for the greens, eat green vegetables. Avoid red meat because if you want to not be red, you want to not eat red food. I mean, not on every level, probably strawberries are okay, but I've noticed that when you get a lot of sunlight, if you eat a lot of chlorophyll, it'll help you turn that into energy and you won't get sunburned or there's much, much less sunburn. So I dosed myself with a couple salads after that sun, after that sunny day. But it's like I've been inside for so many months, like many, many months. This is a great spot to shoot video, by the way, because I'm getting, especially it's five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm getting uh, some great sun out there. I've got a couple lights here to keep my face lit. But ooh, that feels good. And I just soaked it in for hours. I was just out there soaking it in, back, front, working out in the sunlight, resting in the sunlight. 
drinking water. Lemon, watermelon. What else did I have? I put a piece of cantaloupe in my water, a piece of watermelon in my water, and uh, what was the other thing I put in my water? Pineapple. Put a piece of pineapple in my water and let it sit in the sun. Soak in the sun. Discharged all that flavor. And I, I tasted that. That was delicious. And now, now I have an interesting night ahead of me. It's one of those nights where I got up very early this morning. I got up at like 5 a.m. to take a meeting with Mark and the team, with mine, Bill and John and Jack and Andy. And Mark's in England right now, so we're, it was pretty much his late afternoon. <clears throat> so I got up at 5. I actually had a meeting at 6. And uh, got a bunch of work done in the morning and then took a nap for a few hours and then got up took another meeting got a bunch more work done and uh, I kind of have an evening to myself for the first time in a while in a nice clean apartment I don't feel like I have anything to do like that needs to get done right now I'm sure there's tons of stuff I could do I could build you know I could work on probably structure something with uh, with mines right now I'm thinking about God, there's just so many things to do. What can I do? Push-ups would be nice. When all else fails, do some push-ups. Kind of want to play some video games, but I've done enough of that. Uh, I was thinking about Skyping with Bryce and Charles, but it's late for them now. It's coming up on like 6 o'clock, so for them it's like 9 o'clock, and Charles is in the military, so he's getting up at 4 a.m. What's up? He wanted me to... Get on Skype a couple hours, but I was like, I can't, dude. I have to make a video. I've got to do work till seven. He's like, ah. So we're gonna meet up tomorrow, talk a little bit. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do tonight. But I know what I'll do right now. Keep talking. Keep talking. Let's bask in the sun a little bit. Drink some water. like my green lights do you see all oh, right let me turn this off for a second that's very bright sorry about that look at those that green light up there and then over there too they're color changing have I showed you these before so they come with remotes and uh, you can uh, change them any color really that's really cool <laughs> Excuse me, put them on like strobe effect. Which, that's not very strobey. That's a slow strobe flash. It's just like strobe, but faster. Smooth? Oh, this is a good one. If I put these on smooth, I feel like a pimp. Like a light pimp. I am the pimp of light. Or is it the light? You know, vector? The term vector? You probably know in mathematics, vector is uh, light back on. In a mathematics, a vector is a measurement of speed and distance traveled. So, like, I don't know if it's if it's a measurement of momentum, but it's like if you travel five feet in three seconds, that that creates a vector, and you can be shown as a line with an arrow showing what direction it's going, and then how the vector indicates how fast it's going. But I just, interestingly enough, my friend uh, Shannon Strazelkowski told me in, uh, in flying, vector is a verb as well. You vector, which means you travel a certain distance at a certain speed. So I think that's a very interesting concept. And if I was high, it would be even more interesting concept because the idea that space travel is also the travel itself is a fascinating tool of reality and it bleeds into so many areas of our lives so let's vector together and I'll vector till tomorrow and see you then and now I'm gonna hit the record button without looking at it let me see if this is it that wasn't it that's it